every soul be subject unto the higher powers. That's what the word of God says. Then it says, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resist the power, resist the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation, which is really judgment. I want to go to another verse there, and it reads, let me explain it quickly. The next verse reads like this. Verse 4 reads, For he is the minister of God for good. Who is it talking about? It's really talking about the government. I hate to put it that way, but church, we got to know something. This truth that we, I'm going to try to just stay calm and just minister and teaching tonight and trying to reach so we can understand who we are. When I first got in this thing, and it's called this thing in the book of Acts. Now, when I first got in this thing, they told me that the apostolic church is right. The Holy Ghost moves. We are baptized in Jesus' name, and we are on it. Now, after they told me that, I went to the book myself, and I read where the Bible says that we are on it. This is it. What they're trying to do and what the devil is trying to do today is bring all of this havoc, if you will, against the church and make people seem like that we're some kind of a cult or something. The live tabernacle church here is on it. Apostolic Pentecostal and the book proves that. So we don't need to question, even though we don't need to be running scared, we need to stand firm. We might can't get to the house of God, but we need to stand firm on what we believe and know what we believe. It's got to be in our hearts. We have got to know who we are and where we stand in an hour like this. It goes on to say, for he is the minister of God to thee for good, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. I'd like to go further in that, but I just want to simply say this. The Christian man is right as long as he stays in this book. But when we are looking at the government in a situation that we are in, they can come in and say what they want to say. We have got to surrender to them. LTC, you're not wrong. Don't let the devil beat you down and make you feel like that you're wrong. You are right, and we are on it when we say that. Let me go to the scripture here and show you some things in the book, how we got started and where we are. Now, I want to go to the open scripture again. The title of this message, y'all, is just this, church family. It's just this, scared to death. And that's because a lot of people are afraid out there because they really don't know what move to make. And I can understand that. All of a sudden, here we are high in the world that we get here, and people are worried about, man, I, I got to pay my rent, and I don't have money. You know, I can't go to the job. There's a curfew here. There's this. Things is happening, and all of a sudden, we're realizing this thing is real. So my thing is, we can't beat it. We're not going to line up with nothing that's wrong, but we sure enough better make sure that we got a relationship with God in this hour. This thing is real. Woke up this morning and was thinking, man, it would be good if I could look at the way things really are and turn around and say, April Fool. But I can't do that because things are just too, it's the truth. This matter is here before us. It's here before us. And we've got to accept that because it is here. How do we beat it? Let's look at Mark chapter 9, if you will. And I want to go to verse 17. Mark 9 and 17 reads like this. One of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. He couldn't talk. Wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to the disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. A little further. He answered him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. Next verse says, And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. Next verse please. And he asked his father how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said of a child. Next verse. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters 
to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Hold it right there. I want to explain a little something here, y'all. This man at this time was desperate. This man at this time was scared. This man is looking at his little boy who the devil has played havoc with all his life. He has thrown him into the fire. He tried to drown him. He had him just, just, just going against him. I mean, the man had done everything he could to get help for his son, and now he's watching. He said, hey, I took these your disciples and allowed them to come to try to get this devil out of my son, and they couldn't do anything. So when he gets to Jesus, he's desperate. He's hurting. He is scared to death. And you know what? When a parent gets to a place that they're looking at their own child and they can see the child in need and there's nothing they can do, they get desperate, brother. They get scared. When that little child's temp goes way up high and you're praying and that temp seems not to go down, all of a sudden, man, your attention is gotten. And then let me read a little bit further here. Next verse. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. The man is saying, hey, can you just do something? Can you just do something? My little boy is hurting. And Jesus turns around and says, well, if you can believe, we might get something done here. We will get something done. Straightway, the father of the child cried out. All of a sudden, Jesus said, if you can believe, we can get the job done. All of a sudden, the man cries out with tears. He is desperate, y'all. He is hurting. He is scared. His son is in need. And then he says, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. Saints, when you get into a place and you are hurting, you're doing everything you can to believe the word of God that's already been promised to you. But there's something about it when it gets really hot and heavy, you got a place in you that you're trying to get through or you're trying to get over, and it's just like, man, I believe it, but there's still a part of me that just don't quite believe it. What is going on? I do believe, but Lord, help thou mine unbelief. And Jesus is saying, I'll help you if you have faith. But you know what? If we get scared in this hour, if we really get scared, it's going to start affecting our relationship with God. It's going to start us questioning what the Word of God is really saying. It's going to get us to a place where we're going to, going to have doubts about what the Word of God is really saying. Then it'll get us to a place where we won't even hardly believe some of the things the Word of God is saying because, Lord, it's hot and heavy out here. What in the world is going on? And then people start praying because, folk, let me tell you something. This thing is coming, and it's coming fast, and it's coming hard. And I'm telling you, we're not going to be able to turn it around, just us alone. But, Brother Carlton, we're praying. Let me ask you something. Jesus told the man, if you can believe, if you just can believe, then let's get the job done. The man says, I believe, but there's still a part of me that I just can't seem to get a hold of that belief in that. God has given everybody a measure of faith now. But there's something within that, can God heal if he really wants? God can do anything he wants to do. So let's question this thing. If God can really heal, and God can really stop this pandemic that's coming already here, then why don't God stop it? So if God can stop it, and God has not stopped it, then what's the problem? If God can stop it, and God has not stopped it, now, okay? So what we're saying is, does that mean that God can't stop it? Wrong. God can stop it. So does that mean that God wants it to happen? I'm not saying God wants it to happen, but God is allowing it to happen for certain reasons. But what we have to do is just get to a place to realize what's there, and then say, Lord, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get closer to you because I know something is going to happen real soon. And they, they are already telling us that within the next couple of weeks it's going to get a little worse than what it is. But if that be the case and you can't get here, then you're going to have to hunker down where you are and you're just going to have to pray from where you are. Matter of fact, we need to get a hold of this thing called prayer. We need, we need to pray like we've never prayed before. There are some folks uh, uh, among us that would be among us if we could gather here that needs our, every one of us need prayers one from another. 
because it is time to pray, especially in the hour that we're in. Folks, it is time to get with it. It is time to get with it. It is time to get with it. This is a generation right now. I don't know why in the world, brothers and sisters, and I say to you that's at home, I don't know why in the world that even if this is not the last day, it's the last days. And if things is happening according to what the Bible says, because God can stop this anytime he chooses to do so, all he has to do is say, peace be still. Coronavirus locks its heels and it heads back to hell where it came from. If that be the case, my point that I'm making is God can do anything, but since God is not going to do it right now, evidently, then we're going to have to hold on until God does. It don't mean that God can't. God's still God. But what we got to do, folk, we got to get a hold of God in prayer. And I realize that things are happening. I realize that things are happening, and they're happening fast. But y'all, if I can just teach this thing without getting stirred up here a little bit, the thing that we gotta do, and the thing that I feel the world has to do, is first of all, get back to repentance. The Old Testament closed when God sent a warning to people we had to repent. The New Testament opened, and, and, and John the Baptist was the one that was leading the way. And he just kept telling everybody, Jesus is coming. But in order for you to get a hold of Jesus, you're going to have to repent. The, we don't see the repentant part is what I'm saying, y'all. And what I'm saying today is if we sit back and let ourselves be lost when all of this stuff is happening out here, man, we're going to be in a whole lot of trouble because we won't have any excuse at all. God, please, help us, please. I got about 20 minutes, y'all, to share my heart with you here tonight. But I'm stirred up because here we are, and we just seem so helpless. People out there don't have an answer. We don't even really have the answer, but we do know that we can pray. The thing that I'm instructing us to do, if you would allow me to instruct you, if I can just share with you, is just this. Do not panic. Do not walk in fear. Let's stand firm on the word of God. I know we gain strength one from another, and I know we would gain strength if we could be in the house together tonight. But since we can't be here, we've still got to realize that God is still God. We're just going to have, I want us to pray now. Even right now, I want us to pray. Sister Angie Quarles, I want you to pray. Wherever you're sitting, Sister Angie, I want you to pray right now. I want you to pray right now. Sister Galley, if you're there, if you're hearing me, I want you to pray. Brother Curtis, I want you to pray right now. I want you to pray right now. Praise God. Brother Sam, I want you to pray right now. I want us to pray right now. Sister Gordon, I want you to pray right now. Praise God. I want, you to, I want us to pray because there are people in this church that need prayer, and we need to know that our brother has got, we need to pray right now. I'll let my God, my God, we need to pray right now. Praise God. Sister Solomon, I need you to pray for us right now. My God, my God, my God, let's pray right now. Because God is waiting on the church to be the church so the world can be saved. And things is just happening. God bless the church. God bless your people. God keep your people. God strengthen your people. God leads your people. God, God, God guides your people. God comfort us, Lord. God help us not to walk in fear. God help us still, God, to walk in your favor because we are the church of the living God. My God, my God, my God, my God. Have mercy on us, Jesus. God save your people. God, your people are reaching out, God, and they can't get to the house of God. But even now, Lord, those of us that will pray right now, we can reach them and we can let them know that you're still God and we're still the church of the living God and we're not walking in, in, in no fear. We're walking in favor. We're walking with faith. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God's good to us. The old pioneers, I wonder how they would behave right now, y'all. I wonder how Brother Stamper would handle this right now. He was an old pioneer. Brother Lilly, down the street there. What would the bishop do at a time like this? What would he say at a time like this? Brother McDonald that was here, 
Brother Lyle that used to sit up front, I could look at the pews and remember some of these good old brothers years ago. How would they handle these things? I don't believe they'd fall apart. I don't believe they'd turn their back on God. We don't understand everything that goes on, but one thing that we know, we're still the church of the living God in this hour. And we're going to have to stand firm, y'all. We're going to have to stand firm. And we're going to have to have a prayer life for ourselves. We've got to do it. Because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. I don't know. I was telling one of the brothers not long ago, it just seemed like I felt like that 2020 was going to be a rough time. And here we are just starting off fourth month in it just like this. And my God, it's rough and getting rough. But one thing about it, we've got to keep the focus. We've got to keep the focus. Do we have a pastor right now? No, but we still got to keep the focus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. What I would say now if he was here would be to clap your hands unto the Lord. But I know you there at home and you probably think, well, my God, we'll still clap our hands to the Lord then because he's God. And like I'm saying, church, tonight, I want you to know that LTC, we're not just the church. We're part of the church. But as far as this local assembly, my God, we, we, we get strength from one another. We pray for one another. Y'all keep praying for one another. Don't hold back on that. Keep praying for one another. We got to walk in victory. We can't walk in, in, in fear. We can't walk in fear. What is the opposite anyway? I, I'm, I'm not going to use much time, but what is the opposite anyway of, of fear? Let's look at 1 John 4 and 18, please. 1 John 4 and 18. 1 John 4 and 18, if you would. It says it right here. There is no fear in love, but perfect love has out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love so we see the opposite there of fear it's not faith you know the opposite of it is love because it says right here there is no fear in love but perfect love cast out fear fear hath torment when people allow themselves to get fearful man there are people even they're afraid of everything. People are afraid of the dark. They're afraid of the devil. They're afraid of thunderstorms. I fear that myself a little bit, almost. But they're just, people just fear of everything. I know people are afraid if a black cat crossed the path. They run for cover because a black tabby cat ran across the path. You know, people are, are scared. They're scared because, you know, uh oh, I walked on the ladder. I got to turn around and go back. Scared, fear. People living in fear. They don't know what the next move is. They, but you know what? This is what I believe. My last 10, 15 minutes, this is what I believe. I believe if we get a hold of God, if we get a hold of God, get closer, my God, get closer to God, that relationship that we have with God will help drive that fear back. Perfect love will cast out fear. But in order for us to get a hold of God, we got to repent. Because there are some things in the book, y'all, that we got together, but there's some things that we probably don't have together. But we got to repent before we get this relationship with God where it needs to be with us as individuals. And God is giving us time to do that. Let me show you quickly a couple of the good brothers in the book that had a relationship with Jesus, but they were not perfect. And one of those good men was John the Baptist. John the Baptist was, was, he stayed in the wilderness probably all of his life pretty much. John the Baptist, he was called to the ministry, I guess, when he was about 30 years old. His job was to introduce the Lamb of the world to the world, the Lamb of God to the world, which was Jesus. A few months older, no, he wore camel's hair, ate locusts and wild honey. He, he was the Elijah, if you will, that had come to life in the New Testament. All right? So John the Baptist was a man that had a mission, and he had a relationship with Jesus more than, than anybody, so to speak. Not anybody, if you will. But my point I'm saying here is even though 
he ministered for a year and a half. They locked him in jail because of some woman that lied on him and they got him put there in jail and all. But after John the Baptist did everything that he did, just before he died, in jail, he had a question. And his question was, is he the one or do we look for another? He had a doubt or a question about who Jesus really was even after doing everything that he did and passed every test probably, if you will. One of the greatest men that ever walked in shoe leather, but he still had some questions at the end about Jesus, if you will. Now Jesus sent word back and told him who he was and let him know that, hey, I'm still the one because miracles are still taking place. Praise God. So what I'm saying is, even this man that says, I'm desperate, I need some help, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. But you know what happened? That man did not have perfect faith, but Jesus still healed that baby, if you will. He still healed that baby. Let's go back to this verse here, and you just had it, Luke 22, I think. Praise God. Luke 22 and 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Hold it right there. If y'all was here tonight, I would probably ask you a question or two about that. Because Jesus is here talking to Simon Peter. He called him twice. And then he said, the devil it's just lurking at your front door. He's trying to get to you. He wants to destroy you. I'm sending you a warning that you got to be careful. But beyond that, I prayed for you that your faith don't fail. And what he was really saying there is, I know your faith can fail. And what I want to interject right there before I try to finish explaining this is, saints of God, when you are praying for things to happen, if things don't happen the way you think they should or when you think they should, don't let your faith fail. Don't, don't get scared. If you get scared and you start running for the hills before you know it, you'll start questioning God. You'll start questioning this apostolic ministry that you're a part of. Don't believe what the world is saying when they say something like this, that, or the other about the church of the living God. Don't let your faith fail fail because my mama didn't never tell me there would be days like this but Jesus told me there would be days like this because it's in the book and you know what I don't want to be the one to bring it to you but I guess I do it's probably going to get worse in some areas y'all I'm not saying tomorrow next week next month I don't know but based on what I read in this book there are some things that's going to happen in this book and those that's gone on ahead of us, those pioneers that lived it, and they stayed faithful to the end, Brother Hurt, the way he would turn and praise God, he's made it in. He don't have to worry about any of this stuff anymore. But now we got to stay focused, and we got to stay firm, and we got to stay on track because we can get almost to the door there, and it can close on us if we're just not true. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Let's go to another one, I believe. And he said unto him, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. Do you know that Peter meant every word of what he just said? He said, not only will I go to jail with you, I'll die. He meant that. But you know what he did? Next verse. And he said, I, I tell thee, Peter, cock shall not crow this day, for thou shalt thrice deny thou knowest me. So wait a minute now. As we wind it down, wait a minute now. Jesus said, I'm going to pray for you that your faith don't fail. Did his faith fail? Did his faith really fail? When he said this now, I die for you. I go to prison for you. Jesus said, Satan's trying to destroy you, but I have prayed for thee that your faith don't fail. So when he had an opportunity to prove what his faith really was, 
did he fail? Did, he, did, did Peter fail? Did his faith fail him then? It did, but it didn't, if, that's, if I can put it that way. Because Judas's faith failed. I mean, it hit rock bottom, and he was totally lost, if you will. Peter's faith fell, but not to total destruction. Because Jesus says, and when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren, if you will. So again, it's not that Jesus' prayer was not heard. All of us is going to go through something. And just because you go through something, there are some people right now, apostolic Pentecostals, that's on it. And what they are questioning and thinking in their mind, wait a minute now, what's going on here? You know, I got a family member that's sick. I mean, my job is gone. Lord, are you there? There are some folk that's questioning God, and really, if they got an evaluation from on high, you might say, man, did the faith fail when they start questioning God? That's only a part of it when you start going through some things and you really don't know what's what out there. That's the time you're going to have to trust in the Lord. Because can I go to uh, Psalms 56 and 3, please? Psalms 56 and 3. Praise God. Psalms 56 and 3, please, and we'll close it down. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And no matter how hot and heavy it gets outside, as little sister said a few minutes ago, you know, he's still with us. He's still with us, y'all. No matter how hot and heavy it gets on the outside, Jesus Christ is still with us all. Let's look at Luke 12 and 32. Look at Luke 12 and 32, please. It reads, fear not, little flock. Fear not, little flock. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Don't be afraid. Don't, don't walk in fear. Don't, I want to say that to the church. Don't be afraid. Fear not, little flock, he says. Fear not. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He's not turned his back on us. He's, I've been through some things, and you have too. We're going through some things, and we will continue to go through some things. But we've got to understand who we are where we came from, how we got here, if you will, because somebody introduced us to this glorious truth. And like I said, before I came to this glorious truth, I didn't know anything about it. But when I came, and it was totally brand new, repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, receive the Holy Ghost. Man, that's it. That's a revelation there. But it's the devil's job to do everything he can to make us look bad on this end. There are people that don't know what to think about it, but if we can just live the life before them and let them know, my God, there's something different about that guy, then we'll understand. Then we'll understand some things. They'll understand some things because what God wants us to do is reach the loss at any cost, and when it gets rough and hot outside like it's doing, we're going to have to stand firm and realize God is still God. We don't have to be scared. We can face tomorrow. You know why? Because he lives. I want to pray for this great church right now, and uh, because we don't see one another a whole lot anymore, and uh, we don't communicate a whole lot. If we don't call you on the phone or text, then we don't know what's going on with you, if you will. But uh, no meeting tomorrow night for the elder board, no meeting tomorrow night, that is. Also, uh, we'll give you some heads up later on what we're going to do later and how, because the church goes on. But as we read the scriptures, the scriptures say we got to do what the book says. That's the scriptures. That's the book. Praise God. Love you today. Love you today. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay, keep your focus, y'all. Keep your focus. Love you today. Appreciate you so very much. Giving God all the praise and all of the glory and all of the honor. You know why? Because he's God. And he's God all by himself. Fear not, little flock. Let's go to heaven together. God bless you. We love you. And you dismiss from your home area there in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God.
Hallelujah. Oh, I'm yours, Lord. Everything I am, everything I'm not, everything I got, try me out and see. See if I can be completely yours. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I am, everything I'm not, everything I got, try me out and see. See if I can be completely yours. Praise God. Blown to Jesus tonight and glad about it. Giving him glory tonight and glad about it. Praise God. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. And we love you. Jesus' name.